Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and I'm just going to say right up front, it's late, I'm tired, and this makes it the perfect time to check out Mr. Wildcard's The Complete Entire Lore of Anna Part 2, because of course there is a Part 2 to this giant pile of, let's go with specifically bad trip. Will that be the case? I don't know, because I haven't seen it yet, and honestly I was terrified to bring myself to check this out prior to now, so yeah, that's the thing. More importantly, there's a link below to the original video. I do like how Mr. Wildcard presented the first half, and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what he does with the second. Otherwise, again, link below, video, hit it up. Let's get started. Enna is about the promises of the internet, alongside what? the confusion oh. and emptiness. Oh yeah, because they mentioned the first time, it was a lot of referential work to early 90s and maybe earlier video game styles and just meme culture. As we feel when trying to find purpose. With the fourth episode of the Enna series, titled Power of Potluck, I'd like to this show one. you why this is the case. This oh, is it actually explains the it? The entire law of Enna, part two. The Enna so series how much actually is gets about explained? the internet. This is especially true when you consider that the genre itself is called Internet Core. Bright colors, vomit-inducing text. I'm sorry, this is a style? And already he has given us more information than I thought existed to link this entire thing. I thought this was just as someone's weird, this is what I think of the internet in the 90s. But no, if there's an actual term for this, that means there's other people who have already done this and made similar things. And since I don't think Enna and anything Joel G have done around this are that old, there's other people who have done similar media then. Huh. Cheers and bizarre interactions what make the? this the primary style of the genre. I have reason oh, to believe that weird. the newest episode, Enna, Power of more Pop 3D. Rock, is about the empty promises of the internet, which time and time again failed to Everything here looks like a trip, oh god. people happy. In order to ensure people actually watch the episode- Wait. Wait. The promise of the internet and how it doesn't make anyone happy. Oh, when you rephrase it like that, this suddenly makes a lot more sense. Episode, huh. I will be linking the video in the description. I will be going under the assumption that you've watched the video and will guide you through each of my own interpretations. Yeah, I'm definitely the wrong person here. I'm doing this because I tried to look through his videos. I, I tried. I really did. I did not understand what was going on to the point where my head started hurting and I'm just like, you know what? This is not my type of thing that I would willingly engage with. But it was still interesting enough, which is why I'm checking out his work. And honestly, I kind of like this because the breakdown does help people whose mind doesn't go full, apparently 90s core centric. Sorry, what internet I think core. What going on? Going off of the previous episode's ending, Temptation Stairway left me fairly confused. We yeah. don't find out what Enna's wish was, what although the? the fact that both sides of her face turn yellow may imply that her wish was to experience oh, pure joy. This is further supported from the scenes in the latest episode. The episode starts off with Enna pressing a doorbell with Mooney in the background telling her to run. That's a doorbell. It's then shown to us that Enna's sad side is now an attached mask, which, regardless of its color, always acts positively. Enna's wish may have come true, although throughout the episode will come to find that this positive side to her isn't real happiness. Enna enters the building with her leading the way and the mask trail. Oh, it's like some of the old games they had of this genre. Not RTS, but more like Fallout style, which I think might have been RTS for all I know. Isometric, that's the phrase, yeah. Hmm. I wonder if the way they consistently develop into slightly altered forms is an indication not so much of the internet or internet core, but of the development of the internet through different genres and decades of usage. If that be the case, then eventually it'll get hyper-realistic, then probably end as AI-generated, and then there's nothing left. Trailing behind mm, her. That'd this be depressing. This will be important within the- Okay, that is creepy. It looks like there's an umbilical cord to the mask. Oh, that is weird. Next scene, as the dynamic has changed. Enna speaks to this creature. The creature asks if Enna is entertained enough. Seemingly, the colourful world that Enna is living in isn't enough to give her joy, and so she has ventured into the so deeper weird. parts of her world to seek a higher form of it. She's given a theatre program which, given our understanding of Enna as an internet core genre, could be a literal computer program that functions- The fact that they have like the cutout here, it has like the bones, it just- Who thinks of this stuff? 
everything about this is just like it's cutesy but also you take a little bit from the side at a different angle and it becomes horrific which is probably intentional on that part as a gateway into other entertainment. Upon Enna entering the next area, we see large interconnecting pipes. The Act tubes. One is simply called display. The other side of Enna describes the place as a world of endless connections. Perhaps Enna understands Internet the itself. purpose of the wires in allowing her to connect with other people over the internet. Connections and bonds that are meant to transmit cheerfulness. And even so, I, I don't recognize this strain of joy. As opposed to Enna leading the mask, the mask is now fully in control of her. Oh, as yeah, dragging her around. Parts of her world in an almost desperate movement. What the hell? Okay, this is crying women made of water stuck in what looks like sewer grates in a jester. I just did. George have anything to do with an amazing digital circus? Because I know it, it kind of reminded me of the last one, but this one is. It's disturbingly reminiscent, including the color palette. Suddenly, there is an odd room with water flowing down a drain. Notice also how Enna hides her sad side from the camera, a recurring position throughout the episode. Tears appear from a figure who summons another figure below them. The figure explains how tears can be induced by both sadness and joy. What I want to direct your attention to is the constantly flowing images of a mouth talking. Per Wait, they hid so many things the last one. Are these actually forming syllables and words that you just have to decode as you go? Personally, I think this is symbolic of internet content that is made to evoke an emotional feeling. That is, to make someone feel good. The mouth talking- Uh-huh. I know there's a lot of people saying, like, the internet will bring us together and cause joy, and that was very much a very- Let's go with the nice phrase of optimistic way to look at it, but to make you feel good, honestly, that one I'm still a little debated on. Oh, the court stuck debating on because I always thought it was more a matter of it would bring you entertainment, it would bring you interest, it would bring you things you didn't know before. But they say ignorance is bliss, and the more you find out about people on the internet, the more you don't feel bliss. Acts as a but maybe that's just my jade view. The figure states that happiness is not found within the first act, but rather the second. We see Act 2 titled oh. The Rising. I think okay. this represents the confusion one feels from exploring the internet. The joy in this act is a result of the curiosity many people experience in being lost down a rabbit hole. Anna notes how this form of happiness is strange, which when you consider our momentary satisfaction from exploring weird web pages. This is actually even creepier seeing the sad side just just seeing all the connecting tissue that really makes it weirder. Honestly, yeah, the connection, not even the connection, but like the flat out call outs to a lot of internet culture, as soon as he put it that way, as soon as he said what type of genre this is, it does make a lot more sense. This does look really thematic to what's going on. And videos but... is understandable. Suddenly, in a Whoa. strange void of space and time, Enna and her mask travel alongside images of other random figures. This act is the most interesting, which I think represents the identity we place on ourselves when using the internet. Oh, the is it memes? Enna encounters tell her that she's the one up on stage. The and yeah, they're now in more of the point and click adventure style. Third and fourth act are called Crescendo of a Descent. Since oh, Crescendo that is weird. Gradual... And you see what's supposed to be the overlapping happiness, but then you see the skeleton just kind of drained away behind it. Oh, this increase. Is so the use of the word descent is a unique contradiction. The idea that joy can be found as one slowly begins descending downwards. The figures tell <laughs> Enna to take her role and play out joy to all audiences. That it's now her mission. I play out joy. And here's the figures playing out joy, and there's literally nothing left on them. There's just bones in their shadow. I think this is symbolic of the joys we feel when posting on social media or presenting an identity to the world. This joy of course comes with its downfalls when we don't receive any recognition. The skeletons yeah. present within the figures, I believe, reflect on how we reveal our personal and inner lives to people we don't know. The mask recognizes this as a story of silent movements, which it is. What may feel like a personal connection to strangers is in reality just a small interaction made in vast amounts of content that are usually never heard. Indeed, though I feel the gratification of the audience, 
I can't sense any change in me. Change? Hey, how could a chore like this jollify someone anywho? And a record. So is that a direct shout out to content creation or is this still too early in what it seems to be representing? Oh, no, no, because they're talking about just posting in general. But it would then apply later to content creation because it is a very much an offshoot of that. Recognizes that an audience may appreciate the presented identity of a creator, but this connection is shallow and limited and does not provide her any happiness. So is it actually verging on the parasocial relationship? Or is that just something that would be here, but not quite what they're going for? Because it almost seems like that would be the case. Uh, the parasocial nature of the internet being that, for example, the people watching me right now, if anyone has watched more than a few videos of mine, they might know my personality of being an absolute dork who obsesses over little details because I find it adorably fun. Adorably fun. Also, I say weird shit like that sometimes. But I've never met most of the people here. A few people I have, and I've played D&D &D with them. They're awesome. But a lot of the times, that's just one of those... It's kind of a one-way street, and it's really awkward because, I mean, I'm a complete and utter introvert, and talking to people scares me. So I can do this, but if we met in real life, I'd be like, okay, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. Okay, time to panic! But that's just me. Other people treat it differently and in, admittedly, much more fucked up ways. So I wonder if this isn't quite so much that level yet, but it's going to feed into that because it does have a lot of similarities. She questions why the obligation to share information is something people enjoy. The final act is We therapy, like talking. Where a figure made out of skulls begins to talk to Anna. We'll get back to what therapy might mean in this context. It does feel the like scene, it's just the skulls asked drained Anna of a meaning. Question. What's the flavor of today's voyage? Abysmal! What the fuck? Oh, there's a lot going on here. It tastes like I'm in a real cosmic stew. The happy blue side of Enna attempts to hold it together, whilst being clearly frustrated at her inability to find purpose or joy in the journey. The skull points out how the mass joy is only an exaggeration. Enna's last speech discusses how she recognizes how people may find joy in each of the acts. Oh, and she got her normal f other side face back. And the mask was pulsating with the joy lines. That's why it's called the power of potluck. It, potluck is literally coming together to share food. So in this case, it would be sharing content and ideas. Okay, that's the naming scheme. How they feel almost familiar, but she can't yet understand them. Well, the timeless journeys through this place always are familiar. Every time I... Acknowledge the enjoyment and pleasure. And all I got were incomprehensible feelings. This is when the sad aspect of her returns before the mask that took over Oh, the mask actually just exploits. dies. I do also find it interesting that all three expressions are present within the frame. The skull then gives Anna harsh but truthful advice before finally ending oh? on a somewhat positive note. The it truth does. is though. You will never find fun in this place. Because it's forced joy of people who are just drained of everything until they just put up the fancy happy go luckiness. Kind of like it's artificial and dead posting. Huh. At least that's what it would look like just because of the over the top skull motif. But that could be misreading remember, it. It is never lost forever. Oh? Often the greatest fun can be found in the little moments. Oh. The skull then states that Enna need not return here anymore. That also, I just want to throw out, dear God, the voice work on that skull, man. I am so freaking jealous of that voice. That is the kind of rough, gravelly voice that you would like to have as you age into it. Usually with a smoking pipe and a nice overcoat or even a, hmm, what's it called? Like a lounge jacket? bathrobe i don't know just to go back pick up your feet have a book in one end some kind of snifter of brandy or in my case a cup of tea or a glass of tea because I, i've tried harder spirits i i don't do them well mostly because i don't actually feel anything i just get hung over immediately it, it's actually very annoying but yeah uh, this is her huh. resolution i don't Love think voice, this though. is a command that enna isn't allowed to return but rather resolution? the resolution to finding purpose in her life is to not access the deeper parts of her world which don't make sense now going with wait 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 
only the deeper parts because I'll be honest, the not deep parts also didn't make sense. The theory that Ennis world is representative of the internet, therapy may mean how we use the digital space as a way of fixing our problems. It explains why Enna is always at two extremes. A lot of good and engaging media can be used to make us feel a range of emotions, mm. but the media we find most abundant on the internet tends to evoke great happiness. Or or in many cases, anger, because extreme emotions attract extreme interest, which do hold people's interest. If my idea that this is moving through genres of the internet, because we're seeing different styles portrayed, then eventually we will see something that looks very different. I know they're making a game, I wonder if that plays into it. Or sadness. It's these two extremes that constantly keep us engaged, which I think may explain why Enna's two sides act so spontaneously. Enna's entire journey is her attempt at finding meaning in the deeper parts of the internet, of finding joy by learning what it is that makes people happy. It's this delusion which is the reason she only appears happy, right until the therapy act when her perspective is finally grounded in reality. And so, her mask was breaks upon therapy finally act? learning the truth. The skull telling Enna that fun can be found in the little moments is about how the internet can be used for positive things like communication, finding people with like-minded interests, or just generally satisfying a curiosity. But for anything beyond that, yeah, anything beyond that, I know where they're going on this one. That's where it gets dark. And hell, even just the like-minded interest can go really badly when that like-minded interest kind of butts up against something else and you get the random crazy shit that you can think yourself insane. Didn't think you could do that, but apparently you can. It becomes far more toxic. We return with Mooney calling Enna's name and once again telling her to run. Mooney tells Enna that she was supposed to press the, the bell and fuck? run because it was part of a game they were playing. Enna sees the figure on the left and appears both confused and curious. It unzips yeah. itself and reveals probably one of the most normal looking people in the entire series. Now stay with oh. me here. Considering we were talking about identity. And the guys coming out of the mouth as a regular looking guy, but even he has a zipper on him, so that's still a sock puppet. I think the zipper conveys the facade we have when we're online. Unzipping it reveals a sad, normal looking There's person. There's a hand there? Because at the end of the day, we are uh, also sad, normal looking people behind our internet personas. I'd like to conclude now as to what I think the dream barber- Wait. Oh, I've heard about this one. This is a game that's being made, right? Or sorry, experience surreal environments and inexplicable characters as Anna in a new wild world. Yeah. The game is going to be about. Now, throughout the series, Anna is very naive. Perhaps I'm tempted to play, but also terrified. Greatly familiar with what the web has to offer, but somewhat understands surreal, yeah. parts of it. Let's look at the first trailer titled Anna Dream Barbecue Game Announcement. Already in the intro, we can probably Whoa. recognize that the game itself is going to Heavy be 90s slightly anime style. more disturbing than previous episodes. Flashes of imagery appear before us as we see several different characters for the last scene. A pool of blood is shown on the right side of the characters. Oddly enough, what I'm thinking here is probably not the reference he's going with. It's still surreal, but I'm getting Evangelion vibes on here because it looks like the animation style for the old 90s animations. Huh like heavy animation or specifically anime style from the 90s this with oh, guy next even out of it. it's unclear whether this entire scene is the character itself briefly we see an uncanny human-like face laugh yeah. at us the character is weirdly displayed as having potential significance although for now i'm not too sure of its importance admittedly when it comes down to anything involving anna Significance is weird because can you understand anything going on? I definitely can't. The next video, however, what? titled the Anna Purgina? Music Preview, The Purge Event by Meta Room, has a lot of importance. A human like what? face is displayed in the background, along with a similar laughing motion as the previous person. Consider I'll be honest, when I saw this, I initially thought this was a reference to Okay, this is gonna be kinda of bad. One of the Metal Gear games, I think it was Snake Eater? No, no, it's the fifth one, whatever five was. Ghosts of Patriots? or ah, I don't even remember. It's the one where you play as Venom Snake before you realize it's Venom Snake or something. 
I could also be very wrong. I only ever played a few of them. Considering the Anna series takes place over the internet, I'm questioning whether this is the person. It's also a guy in a mullet with a mustache. One of the Anna variants, or perhaps act as an antagonist. I'm leaning towards the latter. When you consider this Anna variant is missing one arm and is holding its oh, head yeah. in pain, the face laughing at its torment becomes quite unnerving. The final trailer contains scenes that are somewhat disturbing in nature. There's more. You see the title. Anna, the worker? Your card, Anna, the worker. And I see lack of conviction in your mind, along with numerous monitors of different faces. Are those Anna, Anna stands faces? in front of what we presume to be a figure of importance. What the... Then we cut to another Anna with a hole in her chest. Oh, jeez. This Anna variant has a completely white face. But look at the legs. The legs are both white and red. If we look at the video called Anna's New Voices, we see that the Anna salesperson personality, which is red, and the Anna Mini personality, which is white, both match up to how the colors would look like. Oh, so this is a version then that was angle. hollowed out? The color scheme also matches up to the previous music preview video. We then see this Anna with no arms looking up at uh... the sky as her face slowly decomposes with a green color. Upon my first viewing, I'll be honest, I'm getting a lot of Evangelion vibes here. Considering they're all talking about internet culture, I was not expecting that. I thought that these three depictions of Anna were completely different variants, when, if we look at other parts of the color scheme and character design, they may be the same. My guess is that this Anna is responsible for maintaining order, or for working for a higher power. This would explain the salesperson personality. It is likely that at some point the other side of her personality did something wrong, which- What? Is that a squid on a pyramid? I have no idea. May explain why she is shot in this scene. This punishment appears to be extremely- Oh! Painful. Oh, I see. There was actually the shadows showing that. How it goes from a hand into a fork into the gun. And a really fancy rig This punishment that. appears to be extremely painful as we see the character suffer through the injuries given to her. We see groups of people having fun and dancing, similar to what we might really? see in public game lobbies. But all this doesn't mask the fact that there are going to be some truly dark aspects of this game. One of control, surveillance, and cruelty. This Enna, as we may soon come to find out, may be a lot more intelligent and mature in understanding the truth of what their digital space is really like. Is this the time skip over what's already on the internet, or is it actually just a different Anna who just happens to have the name as? And there were hints in the previous one that there are multiple, so why not? I have so many questions and all of them are... I don't think this game is out yet, but I need to double check With that now. out of the way, I hope you enjoyed the video. I've attached the links to both Joel G's channel and of course the Enna video game on Steam, which you can wishlist right now. It will certainly be fun to see if my theories hold some truth or end up being completely wrong. So that happened. I just... I thought this looked like Digital Circus in the beginning when he was doing the Power of Potluck, but then it moved into the Dream Barbecue, and that was so much Evangelion vibe, from the specific color palettes used to how things are depicted, to the surreal nature, which is a big part of the end of Evangelion. Uh, not, not the movie, but the end of the TV show itself. But even that was a representation of Hideki Anno going through a literal mental breakdown when he was off his meds, and later ones were because he got on his meds and was in a much more healthy place financially as well as mentally. But more importantly, just this is... I don't know, and I kind of want to check out Dream Barbecue, but at the same time, I also realize I would like to not go insane and have to count all the ducks in a room made of cotton that I am now just weaving my hair into because I'm just going to be rocky back and forth going, it's all right, they can't hurt me inside the bubble of nothingness. <laughs> because we all know that's the normal response to most crazy things in life. That aside, I just... There were a lot of people giving me their own little takes and commentaries, and some people agreed, some people disagreed, and then there were some people cross-talking, and I just, I'm at the opinion that while Wildcard is talking about how this is represented on the internet, I'm wondering if it's moved beyond the internet to more of media as a whole, or digital media, which would then include anime, video games, content on the internet, and even content creation, which would follow on from that. So it might even be more expansive, but it's just been slowly moving through steps, which is why it looks so distinct early on. 
and then it was growing and becoming weirder, but also more details it went. It could just be that Joji is becoming more prolific or proficient at how he creates things. But I would actually go back and say that some of the first things he saw, especially in the Temptation Staircase, showed that there were a lot of moments that were really detailed well beyond the rest of it. So it was more that it was an aesthetic style. That's the word. And that might be the case here as well. But it just, it is so goddamn trippy, man. That's probably what reminded me of Evangelion more than anything else. <sighs> so yeah, I can't tell if this is more inspired by Evangelion. And that level of psychotic natured, just people creating who are actually, actually off their meds. Or if it's more similar to the amazing digital circuits where it's just, hey, here's depression. You can't escape. It's forever until you eventually go crazy and succumb to madness and become a monster that feels nothing but pain. Fun stuff. I, I don't know. And for all I know, it could be both. It just happened to work that way. Which admittedly would be terribly, terribly, well... Terrible, but in a fun way for everyone else. Either way, I'm going to go and just look at something not breaking my head because at this point, I don't understand what I'm getting into. I'm fascinated by this. And I, I think I might even check out someone else on my own time outside of YouTube, just trying to get more information about Anna and also completely validate my idea that I cannot watch the original one because it is going to hurt my head. You would just see me just drain out of the screen as my mind breaks. M more than it already is. Yeah. All the same. You guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. And if you go hit up Joel G as well, do that. I'm sure if you have already, then you've probably left it on repeat going, what do the colors mean? Because that seems like the very normal response to anything involving Anna at this point. And I'm not... I... No, never mind. I was going to say I'm not entirely sure I'm joking. No, I'm completely sure that is a legitimate fact. If it hasn't happened, that would be surprising. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.